Hopefully you'll have been seeing how I've been uh, using flintlock miniatures, orc and goblin, Napoleonic uh, miniatures, you know, with elves and uh, ogres and things, for Osprey Games' fantastic uh, new game, new miniature skirmish game, The Silver Bayonet, by Joseph McCulloch, a war game of Napoleonic Gothic horror. My thinking being, it's no great leap from looking for vampires and uh, ogres and trolls in the Napoleonic period to pulling out from the garage my own Napoleonic elves uh, and orcs. Now, the thing is, not only is Flintlock a game that is still in production uh, with miniatures on sale by alternative armies, but there's a sale on at least until the 3rd of December 2021. Though I only thought it right and proper to go and pick up some miniatures, not too many, um, to supplement my existing very old 25-year-old uh, collection to use for uh, the silver bayonet. Now, was it sensible to go and buy even more miniatures uh, when the whole point of this project was to use what I had? Mm, I mean... £45 sale, did it amount to much after postage? Not much. But the thing is, you know, look, I'm the one who chose to get Captain Jürgen Kiltsman, who knocked on an additional 10 quid or whatever. Um, and without that, it'd be about 35 quid. And then I looked around my, you know, local, friendly local gaming store, just buy the buy in passing and thought, you know, what what could that get me if I just supplemented one of my GW uh armies. It could get me, you know, a, a very well detailed plastic lady on a wolf, two wolves and a rock and half of a goblin on a wild squig in, in a Santa uniform. Or it could get me the squig and an elf floating on a cloud. So it just gives you a sense about how you know Games Workshop has, has messed up our um, our, our our sense of price point. So it comes in a beautifully packaged little thin box. It comes straight through the letter box, which was helpful. We start off with Captain Jürgen Kilsman, presumably Jürgen Klinsman, which does, I think, betray the vintage of the game, but nothing wrong with that. Yep, early to mid-90s. Kind of when I remember picking up all these Flintlock miniatures originally, back in the day. And yes, he is a limited edition, apparently. The 803rd of what we imagine will be only a thousand sculpts. Very good quality casting, actually. Good lump of metal. I'll have to work out how to paint him. I think he's going to be some kind of um, cavalryman. Must be. I imagine they were all very similar. Uh, frankly, I may end up just making it up. Blue, red, and gold, and grey. And for a sense of scale, that's him versus a Games Workshop greatsword, and kind of a more standard 28mm miniature. Hello. I mean, they are fundamentally toy soldiers. Here's another one of these um, ogre-like characters. I think in the Flintlock universe, you know, the, the French are elves, the British are orcs, and I think these ogres are the various Germans, so he's a kind of King's German Legion British ogre. And again, isn't he well done? I mean, no particular mold lines. There was a mold line here. But you can see that someone's taken the time and the trouble to try and file it down. 
So they do want to keep people happy, leading just the small ones for me to resolve, but nothing particularly an issue there, I think. Some of these are resin, so he's a, from one of the French allied um, Germanic nations, I can't remember which one it's supposed to be. I mean, which ones were, was it? I think Prussia at one time got roped into invading Russia, obviously the Bavarians, and, and weren't all the little German states on the border of France turned into one kind of little country? Maybe it's from that, so I'll have to look at what to paint, although I think he's just in a great coat with his rucksack. Ah yes, the Confederation of the Rhine, how could I have forgotten? Also known as the Rheinbund, and those famous German states, Schwarzburg, Waldeck and Reuss. I'm sure we've all heard of those, but basically we're talking about white and blue. And I guess... What I'll be doing is using these trolls as whatever damn fear is, because pretty much everyone else is human, but these damn fears seem to be pretty tough. I think they're anticipated to be some kind of, you know, humanoid, half-vampire type creature like um, Blade or something. But actually, if you look at the stats, you know, they're a little bit faster. Well, why can't trolls be faster? They're big, they've got long legs. It's only GW who've given you the sense of them being lumbering, and to be fair, Lord of the Rings. Their melee is plus two, so, you know, you'd expect the troll to be that good. Mm, would you expect them to be accurate? But in this world of flintlock, you know, they're not dumb, they're just big. Defense is quite high. Courage plus three is, I think, quite nailed. I think an infantryman's plus one. Um, health doesn't seem to be that high, but not bad. Um, but the key thing uh, in terms of flexibility is they they follow the same equipment slot rules as an officer, because in this game... You, you basically pay, there's no fiddliness around buying uh, arms and armaments, as far as I can tell. You don't buy arms and armaments between um, between games in a campaign game. What happens is the basic guys, or even the slightly better kind of characters, they just come with what they've got. And if you want to swap what they've got, well, some have options. You know, you can have, you know, a, a hand weapon and pistol or a, a rifle, but, you know, a, a musket. But largely they've just got, what you know, one particular item. And if you want to swap out what they've got, you've just got to swap characters to upgrade to a better character type. But except there are th three or four character types who uh, are kind of usually a bit more nails and their cost is quite high. And I think it's because the cost has had built into it what goes into these equipment slots. And I think it's six. And so I th think, you know, like a musket, I think a musket takes up like two. Um, a cartridge box is kind of like one. A two-handed weapon is two. And to uh, mirror the fact that some of these trolls have interesting weapons, like the one guy's clearly carrying a giant, you know, blunderbuss, um, which isn't something I think a, a normal character comes with. I think choosing, running them as a damn fear, whatever that is, um, I think gives you the flexibility you need. And again, to give you a sense of scale. And, you know... Very good old hammer principles, not too hard to paint, I think. Keeping it simple, but characterful. These are some arrows. Ah, oh, the guy on the right must be Duco from the Sharp novels. And I've forgotten what they were called, the lady on the left. Vivandier. I'll have to look it up. There's your Vivandier. I mean, she's not carrying a hand weapon, but I guess that pewter beer mug probably is. And if you get smacked on the side of the head with a pewter beer mug, who's to say it's not a hand weapon? My lord. Ah, some kind of freebie. Some kind of woodland freebie. Or is he a chaos freebie? I can't really tell. 
I mean, it's beautifully cast. Enjoy your free gift, isn't that nice? Well, maybe he can be... Um, I've forgotten the name of them, but in the uh, Warriors of Chaos. Age of Sigma Army as it now stands. There are these weird creatures who just... You know, people who've kind of long gone from sanity and humanity turn into these weird little creatures of chaos. Maybe he can be one of those. I mean, how big is he? Let's have a look. Oh, well, yeah, you know, plausible. Problem solved. Spawns of chaos, that's what they're called. Chaos spawn. Now, Flintlock does have... Not Flintlock, what's called the... Silver Bayonet does have vampires as one of the baddies, so I thought I'd pick him up because he is broadly in scale with the other Flintlock miniatures, obviously. And there he is, you know, good size, pointy ears and fanged teeth. Now this one is quite entertaining. An Orc Priest. With his sword at his side which enables him to be fantastic for a kind of man of faith or occultist, I think, for the silver bayonet. Yup, anyone can take an occultist to get spells. And he's actually holding a hand weapon. But not great at actually fighting. I guess he's more obviously this champion of faith. Now... There are restrictions on uh, what your crew can take based on their nationality. I suppose to give the GW trained amongst us a sense that there is actually a difference between the factions rather than rather than them, them all just being what they are, which is dudes with, you know, the same muskets, pistols um, and swords as everyone else. But actually, uh, and you can take, I think, one person from a kind of an allied nation or I think any other nation just to allow you a little bit of flexibility without breaking the game. But, you know, who gives a monkey to us something like this? You know, just agree with your opponent to have more than one if you if you do want, say, the champion of faith as well as the damn fear. And he too, apparently, is even more limited edition. Or VLE, very limited editions. Not convinced about these bases, but I'm sure I'll find something for them. There it is. And then perhaps some of my favourites, because these elves are fantastically sculpted. That's what knives are for, though we remember to cut away from ourselves and not do it looking through the camera. Vive le Elfish Empereur. There he is with his shako under his arm, calling out, looking all officer like. And then just a couple of dudes. I mean, there's an entire unit of them, but I thought, you know, we're, this is a skirmish game, I only need two. with an axe, which means you can make him, you can just call him a Highlander, you know, because they're just a slightly tougher, heavier dude in silver bayonet with an axe or two-handed weapon. So uh, there's quite a long two-handed weapon there, which you can see. Ah, oh, plus he's got a musket on his back. Well, we'll have to work that one through. I don't know if you can have both, but it is what it is. And uh, he's looking like he's, you know, prowling through the through some Spanish village rather than just being one of 5,000 men walking up and down in a unit. There you have it. We'll call it a day there. Drop me a line if you uh, have any thoughts on any of this. Are you, you know, pursuing the silver bayonet? Will you, 
be using your massive Napoleonic collection? Or will you be trying something a bit weird and wacky like I am here? Um, and by all means do subscribe to see if I actually get around to painting any of these new miniatures. I am quite inspired by the big guys. Have a good day.